Welcome to Module 1.2, the SARS-CoV-2 Genome. This presentation is part of the COVID-19 Genome Epidemiology Toolkit from the CDC's Office of Advanced Molecular Detection. My name is Dr. Shatavia Morrison, and I'm a bioinformatics unit lead with the CDC. This is Module 1.2, which provides a very basic introduction to the genome of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. Please be sure to check out the toolkit's other modules, which include a combination of case studies and training material to help you get started supplementing epidemiological data with genome sequencing data. Microbial pathogens are diverse and come from all domains of life. They include many taxa, such as viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Fundamental to our discussion is that almost all microbial pathogens encode their genetic material in genomes. Those genomes can be comprised of either RNA, shown on the left, or DNA, shown on the right. Both consist of building blocks called nucleotides. You can think of both RNA and DNA genomes simply as long polymers of these four nucleotides denoted in the image, which we typically abbreviate with single letter notation repeat it and organize in very specific combinations. In the same way that words, sentences, and paragraphs in a book are written in a long string of alphabetical letters. All the information necessary for the life of the organism is encoded in that genome. Using high throughput sequencing and bioinformatic methods, we routinely study the entire genome sequences of microbial pathogens. Such tools make it possible to investigate the presence of toxins, antimicrobial resistance, and other known factors related to virulence or pathogenicity. Also, this data can be used to aid in the investigation of potential outbreaks or for source attribution in epidemiology investigations. Genome size varies greatly, spanning many orders of magnitude with viruses and viroids at the small end and higher eukaryotics at the larger end of the spectrum. There is in general inverse relationship between genome size and mutation rate, with smaller genomes typically mutating more rapidly. SARS-CoV-2 has an RNA genome and is marked here with the red star among other RNA viruses. It has an approximate genome size of 30,000 nucleotides and has an estimated substitution rate somewhere between the range of 10 to the fourth to 10 to the third. For SARS-CoV-2, that equates to approximately two mutations per month. In module 1.3, you will learn more about how substitution rates and mutations impact phylogenetic analyses. Viruses as a group are themselves very diverse. Viruses come in lots of shapes and sizes as seen in some examples in the diagram on the right. Viral genomes are very compact, typically comprised of tens of thousands of nucleotides encoded as either RNA or DNA. As we have saw in previous slides, viral genomes are highly variable in size. This is a simple schematic view of the SARS-CoV-2 genome. The varied colors indicate some of the different genes. As already mentioned, the genome is encoded in a linear, single-stranded of roughly 30,000 RNA nucleotides. The genome includes 11 genes, which encode the instructions for approximately 12 products. For example, if you likely heard about the spike protein, whose gene is marked here in red. A single copy of this linear RNA molecule is packaged inside of every SARS-CoV-2 viral particle. Viral genomes randomly mutate at a certain rate. Mutations can be introduced into the genome by various different mechanisms. Those mutations leave behind genetic fingerprints that can be used to infer ancestral relationships, like a family tree among strains. Identification of the ancestral relationship is helpful in depicting the genetic relatedness between the strain sequence. Phylogenetics is a central concept for genomic epidemiology that will be covered more in depth in module 1.3 as we explore how to read phylogenetic trees. This process of random mutation accumulations creates detectable divisions within the global circulating population for any microbial, even when as recently emerged such as SARS-CoV-2. 
genomic researchers tracking population dynamics of SARS-CoV-2 have developed a few different schemas to describe the divisions within the global phenology using standardized nomenclature. This figure summarizes the overlaps between a few of the popular clade nomenclature schemas, namely the Panlingen lineages, next strain clades, and the GSA clades. A clade is a group of organisms that include a single ancestor and all of its descendants. The next strain in GSA nomenclatures aim to provide generic categorization of global circulating diversity, while Paligon is meant to correspond to outbreaks. More details about each of these nomenclature schemas are included in the additional resources for this module. Importantly, there is currently no evidence to conclude that subgroups defined by any of these schemas correspond to differences in clinical characteristics. Following this basic introduction to SARS-CoV-2 genome, we can reiterate some key reasons for sequencing genomes of strains recovered from infected patients during the current pandemic. Sequencing can aid public health officials by monitoring trends and emergence and spread of viral strains at a regional, state, or national levels, which become more informative as vaccination becomes widespread. But sequencing also adds value to local epidemiological activities to investigate disease clusters in different scenarios, like those listed here, which are highlighted in the case study module in this toolkit. To summarize, SARS-CoV-2 is a single-stranded RNA virus with a genome of approximately 30,000 nucleotides. Genomic analysis to date indicates that the mutation rate in the genome is close to a rate of two mutations per month. These mutations permit genomic fingerprinting and phylogenetic analyses that can be used to classify circulating SARS-CoV-2 into clades or lineages with standardized nomenclature but also provides the fundamental data for genomic epidemiology, the primary topic of this training toolkit. Because this module only offers a basic introduction to the SARS-CoV-2 genome, additional, more detailed references are included in the resources material. This concludes module 1.2. Part two of this toolkit contains case studies that review the use of genomics in response to COVID-19. Please visit COVID-19 Genomic Epidemiology Toolkit page where you can find further reading on this topic. On the toolkit page, you can also subscribe to our mailing list and receive announcements as new modules and materials are released. Thank you.